Hello everyone and welcome to this week's RLE. I'm gonna take a few moments before I play the actual RLE uh, where we need discernment on things like this, where we can't allow things to pull at our emotions or our heartstrings because of their very, very slick way of misrepresenting the Bible and a biblical passage. So this week's RLE is going to be diving into another He Gets Us ad where they were talking about Jesus and the woman at the well. So if you would allow me a few moments to go through this to understand the gravity behind the He Gets Us campaign and how they are very deceptively twisting the Word of God and creating this Jesus that is most certainly not the Jesus of the Bible. Let us dive in to the biblical accuracy of the woman at the well. In John chapter 4 verse 7, it says, and remember I always read from the New American Standard Bible and ASB, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water in that passage jesus stated three things three things of which she still did not understand who is he what is the gift of god and what is living water so jesus offers more of an explanation after they discuss jacob which we're not going to dive into jesus answered and said to her after their discussion regarding the well Quote, everyone who drinks of this water, he's talking about the well water, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. John 4, 13 through 14. In this passage, Jesus was speaking of the Holy Spirit who brings salvation to a person who believes. Yet she still did not understand. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way down here to draw water. She still did not understand. Quote, the woman could not grasp this dark saying because of her sin and materialism. All she could understand was that if she had a spring, she would not get thirsty and would not have to work so hard. That is a quote from Edwin A. Blum from the Bible Knowledge Commentary. Continuing this passage that the He Gets Us people twist, her reasoning. Well, Jesus was not just a rabbi. She knew that. Why? because he was telling her something that he knew about her without actually knowing her, thus proving his supernatural knowledge. The woman, as we read, pondered, and she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. However, we just saw, instead of her saying, I am a sinner, she came back with that intellectual argument that we read about and wanted to talk about their ancient dispute. They're two different places of worship. Jesus then begins to explain that those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. This is such a complicated verse for many, even within the church, they don't understand what does that mean? It's very simple. Spirit and in truth means true worshipers realize that Jesus is the truth of God. Jesus is the only way to the Father. To worship in truth is simply put, you worship God through Jesus. And now to worship in spirit is for us to worship in a new realm, 
which God has revealed to people. Therefore, we as believers, we worship in spirit, that new realm, and in truth, knowing that Jesus, comma, the Christ, is Messiah. And this is where the story gets beautiful because belief entered in. And at that moment, she realized Jesus was the Christ. How beautiful was that moment? For those who think that I don't believe in belief alone, I absolutely do. She believed in spirit and in truth. The He Gets Us ad twists the very essence of this passage. Jesus, the Christ, revealed his true identity to her. And what did she do? She was a little standoffish in the beginning, a little arrogant, a little rude. But after she believed and knew that this was Messiah, she ran, leaving her earthly possessions behind. And she told everyone boldly, unashamed, that this Jew was the Messiah. And she boldly talked about her new faith. Why is this important? Well, it's very important. Why does this matter? I don't find it coincidental. Chapter three is about Nicodemus. Chapter four is about the woman at the well. Two different people. One was religious, the other was worldly. Nicodemus, he was a respected ruler. He took his faith serious. He was a Jew. According to the moral code, I guess you can say he was even moral. Nicodemus was orthodox. He was very learned in religious matters. And then here comes the woman at the well. Well, she was an outcast. She was not very respectful to Jesus in their conversation. She was a Samaritan. Clearly, she was immoral. She didn't conform to teachings. And she was ignorant. However, they both needed Jesus. Nicodemus, it was a planned visit to meet Jesus in Judea by night. The Samaritan woman met Jesus in the heat of the day, well, by chance. In the conversation with Nicodemus, we read that it was very theological, and Nicodemus was the one who began the conversation with the Samaritan woman. She had real-world experiences, and Jesus started the conversation. Now back to Nicodemus. He was a highly respected Jew. He addressed Jesus with respect. The conversation between them, you can read it, was a long speech. And we don't know the end result, which is very important. However, with the Samaritan woman, she was a mixed breed. She had hostility towards Jesus. But in the end, she respected him. In the end, she understood her need for a savior. And in the end, she was converted and she shared her faith. Finally, again, chapters three and four, we are to compare two different encounters with Jesus. My friends, I'm telling you, he certainly does get us. But scripture tells us, how does that happen? Well, here you go. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. What does the He Gets Us ad say regarding the passage we just examined. Here is their version. Have you heard the story of how Jesus crossed boundaries of race, gender, and status quo on the side of the road? It goes something like this. Jesus and his followers were on a bit of a road trip walking from city to city. The fastest route was through Samaria, but because tensions between Jews and Samaritans were high, most people went around. Jesus went right through. After walking for hours, the group was tired and hungry. His friends went into town to get food, but Jesus stayed back and sat beside a well. And as he was sitting there, a woman came up to get some water. And get this, Jesus asked her for a drink. 
Okay, that might not sound so strange to you, but it would have caught her completely off guard. And there are a few reasons why. The first is because she was a Samaritan and Jesus was Jewish. Remember how most Jewish people would have gone out of their way to avoid Samaria? The two groups had a long history of bad blood and they were like oil and water. The second reason is simply that she was a woman and she was alone. A man and a woman chatting it up on their own? It would have looked a little suspect if anyone were to see it from a distance. Most men would barely even acknowledge the woman in case anyone were to get the wrong idea. But Jesus didn't seem to care about appearances. And looking at it from a woman's perspective, a man you don't know is striking up a conversation with you? That would have made me anxious today. And the third reason this woman would have been surprised to interact with Jesus is because she would have been surprised to bump into anyone. The story tells us this is happening during the middle of the day. In other words, the hottest part of the day, which explains why an exhausted Jesus sat down by the well in the first place. You see, the women of the town would usually walk to the well together in the cool of the morning, but this woman went later alone under the unforgiving sun. Why? Well, it isn't entirely clear, but later in the conversation, we find out that she had five husbands, which means in all likelihood, a few of them had died. And we also find out that the man she's living with isn't her husband. Whether it was grief or shame or something else that compelled her to go alone, she wouldn't have expected to see anyone, let alone this Jesus guy trying to talk to her. It sounds so simple, but by asking for a drink, Jesus is stepping over barriers of gender, race, and status quo. The woman even calls it out. She asks him how he could possibly ask her for a drink. In modern day, it might sound like, you're not supposed to be talking to me, so why are you? Jesus answered this question by how he approached the rest of the conversation, by taking an interest in the woman's life, her struggles, her shame, her grief, her beliefs, all of her. It's an incredible conversation, and it should be noted that it's not just great because Jesus is part of it. The woman leans in too. She's curious, she's enthusiastic, and she asks good hard questions. You should check out the whole conversation. It's in John chapter 4, but without getting into the details, the big picture answers the woman's question. Why are you talking to me? Because you matter. Jesus took the time to listen to a lonely minority woman who was a stranger. He thought very highly of people his culture did not. What would happen if we tried to do the same? The He Gets Us ad twists the very essence of this passage. Jesus, the Christ, revealed his true identity to her. And what did she do? She was a little standoffish in the beginning, a little arrogant, a little rude. But after she believed and knew that this was Messiah, she ran leaving her earthly possessions behind. And she told everyone boldly, unashamed, that this Jew was the Messiah. And she boldly talked about her new faith. Let us not be deceived by a man-created Jesus.